Amen. Two years ago, I decided I wanted to go in business for myself. Amen. I have a passion for cleaning. Believe it <laughs> And um, I started working for this company so I can get the insight of how to do the job. Um, my, my plans was to only be there for six months. Um, needless to say, I've been there for like a year and a half. Um, and I believe because I got comfortable, I got scared. Um, it wasn't until about three weeks ago, um, I was put into an uncomfortable position to where, um, you know, I felt that it was time for me to go. It was I think God was why I know God was pushing me out of that situation because he know I was there on assignment. Um, and it wasn't until that day when I actually broke down. I mean, I cried. I, I talked to God. I, I mean, I really listened to him this time. Um, I talk to him all the time, but this time I actually listen. Um, one of the things he told me, um, well, he told me just, just listen. That next morning, I, I listened to one of the praise 107.9 every morning, going to work. And that morning, um, Pastor Terry talked about um, being in an uncomfortable position. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that God allows us to be in that position for a reason, mm -hmm. to stay. Don't leave to stay in that position because um, God got something greater for me. Amen. So that Tuesday, I come to Bible study, and Pastor pretty much preached the same thing. <laughs> and as I looked at all my notes, I got to looking back on all my notes from the whole month of March, pretty much. Um, and I, I like to write my stuff down so I can go back and look at it. Look at it. And as I read it, I was just amazed at the stuff I was reading. Um, hold on, I'm sorry. On March the 14th, Pastor, I, I was so into it, I didn't even write notes. I just wrote the title. Uh, <laughs> because I know Pastor was talking. He was stepping on my toes, I tell you. Um, this one's saying, knowing when you are on assignment. That's what Pastor preached on the 14th. And, and then I came, and then on the 19th, he preached on fasting, and I didn't really understand. I, I, I fast before, but I really didn't get the depth of fasting. And I actually fast. I shut down Facebook. I fast. I concentrated on the Word, what God told me to do, yeah. everything. I mean, I did everything I was supposed to do. Then on the, I'm sorry, then he talked about accepting your assignment on the 28th. Uh -huh. And he was saying to find a mentor that helped you set to your get to your next level. He was saying uh, he was saying understand that spiritual attacks will come. And as I walk into my assignment, attacks will intensify. Like I say, I just went back and just read all of these notes, and I'm like, man, this is talking to me. Everything that he was talking about. Um, then on Freedom Friday, the pastor preached on, "Are you walking the walk?" And then on Sunday school, Minister William, he preached on um, shepherd and love. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God did not give us a spirit of fear. And with me reading all of that, I knew it was just time for me to just step out, be bold. Andrew Nett, she did a vision board. And on, on one of my books, she had us to re write stuff that we wanted to release. On my balloon, I wrote, I want to release the spirit of fear. I, I, I want to release getting out of my comfort zone. I want to release being bold. So with all that being said, within these three weeks, I was bold. I stepped out. I did exactly what God asked me to do. Within these three weeks, I got my business license. But, uh, you know, it's from the heart, and I, 
you know, I've been along for the ride, witnessing, just seeing the growth in her. So I thank the true church, everybody here, for encouraging me. Thank the Lord for putting it in my heart and putting it, giving her the desire to, to grow. So just pray for us as we embark on this. Support everything Amen. from Pastor First Lady all of the house. We just love y'all. We love God. And we thank you for this testimony. Amen. 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 Isn't that awesome? Amen. Amen. The word says, "If you faithful over a few things, God will make you a ruler over many." And at the same time, we saw it into good ground. Amen? Amen. The increase has to come. That is beautiful. Anytime somebody has a testimony, it encourages others. The Bible says you'll encourage, you'll, you'll overcome by the power of your testimony. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm excited because now our praise team is going to bless us. Concerning that serious topic, you're not done yet. Uh, thank God for uh, the testimony from Sister yeah, Regina and Sean. Yeah. 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 
baton was passed through through the listening of their ears that they grabbed hold to the word of God and executed it right away. Amen. 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 Praise God. And God has uh, enlarged their territory through the factor of faith. You cannot tell me what God won't do if you wrap yourself around that faith that changes and brings things to a halt. Listen, I'm going to read this word real quick and then we're going to move right along. Amen. I'm going to read Hebrews 11 and 3 and then we're going to carry over to Hebrews 12 and 2. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. If I can, just for a moment, if I can draw your attention, amen, to these monitors, I want to share something with you, and then right after this, we'll move forward. Down to moving. When it comes down to grabbing hold of things that God said that we can have. And what's happened is, is that the enemy has caused us to feel as though that the things that we don't have will limit us to the things that God said we can have. I said that the enemy has caused us to feel as though that the things that we don't have has limited us to the things that God said that we can have. And the Bible tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things that are not seen. And so if we're going to grab hold to the things that God said that we can have, it's going to cause us to have to bust a move. Mm -hmm. It's going to cause us to have to do something that we're scared to do on our own. If you can do something and make something happen within your own, then you don't need God. But if you really believe that God is able to do something for you, and all you are missing is the lack of faith, then your prayer life should not be for the things. It should be, Lord, increase my faith. Amen. Because I'm not limited only if I don't bring faith to the table. When I don't have things, it's not because God don't want you to have it. It's because I have not equipped myself with the faith that God said I can have. All I have to do is ask. And so... I want to encourage you that you're not done yet because some of us have thrown in the towel on ourselves. We feel as though we want some things and we have access to some things, but for some reason, we lack the momentum to go and get it. And what happened is that the enemy has set our joy out of us. It has taken our strength and it has caused us to be diluted when it comes down to the power of the word of God. I can't scare the enemy with the with what, how I use fear in, in, in regards of other people. I, I can't use my authority to cause people to be fearful uh, towards the enemy as I do towards one another. The word of God is either going to drive you or draw you. And it's going to take the word of God to encourage yourself to know what God said about you. If I'm going to have what God said, then I have to believe what he's saying. I have to listen to how he's talking to me. The woman of God came up here and she testified. She said, listen, I've been praying and I've been praying, but I talked to myself and I said, I need to listen. Because oftentimes we're just talking and we're just telling God what we want and we asking God for things. And God is saying, listen, can you just Hush it just for a moment. And let me talk with you. We're laying down and we're hoping and we're wishing for things and we're looking at other people go to the next level and we say, Lord, why not me? When am I next in line 
the book told us over in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, in the third verse, it says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And if we can call ourselves over to Genesis, we see, amen, an opportunity where God looks into the darkness and the deep of the earth where there was no form. And what he does is he speak into a situation and he manifests something out of nothing. Now, he doesn't take light like we do and get electricity and get bulbs and, and try to bring forth light. He takes something, give me another mic, he takes something out of nothing and he frames it from the word of God. And he makes something happen out of nothing. So if we're going to get something out of this word, then we have to study it and use it for our good. Amen. When I use the word, then I allow the word to work for me. <laughs> and I make things appear that was not there because the faith Amen. causes things to form in my behalf. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm coming. I'm coming down your street. And so what happens is, is that through the factor of faith, God allows things to manifest and he causes things to work out for our good. And so the things that we cannot see come to pass because of the faith. Now watch this. You got to understand something that the enemy is on your tail. He wants to cause you to think he knows the plan of God. And so we have adapted to that every time something happens that we've done something wrong. We've come to the custom that every time something prohibits us from getting to the next level, we try to look back and determine whether or not if we brought offense to the throne of God. Because now we've calculated trouble with punishment. And we don't realize that trouble could possibly be from your blessing. I'm not going through things because I've done something wrong. That's right, that's right. I'm going through something because I've done something right. And the enemy is trying to cause you to think that you are on the wrong path. And so he wants you to pause for a moment and try to figure out where did I go wrong. <laughs> But you didn't go wrong, you have been going right. And if you're not careful, you'll find yourself off the path of God and he has to come and get you and bring you right back because what you're trying to get out of him, you can't see this thing yet. What you're trying to manifest in your life, he's beginning to build that thing and make it work out for you, but you're going to have to have the faith. Yes, sir. You're not done yet. You thought you arrived. You thought you gathered everything that you can get. You know, you, you thought you plateaued. You thought you've mastered everything. You, you thought you accumulated all that you can get, but God says, you're not done yet. You're, 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 you're not done yet. I, I know you come to church every Sunday, and I know that you come to church every Tuesday, at least most of y'all, but listen, you're not done yet. God is saying that there's something more that is in you, but you're going to have to let me help you exhale what God inhaled inside of you. Learn how to release that thing and be God is saying, listen, I understand this thing from ending to beginning because Hebrews 2 and 12 and 2 said, looking unto Jesus, the what? The author and finisher of our faith. The author, what he does or what she does is they write the book. <laughs> they write the book is so they understand how this thing is going to play out if <laughs> you read it, if, if you obey. Uh -huh. So Jesus said, listen, I'm the author. I'm the beginning and I am the end. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. If you watch, 
if you learn and if you listen, you can get something out of this. That's right. Yes, that's right. That's right. It's not about you. Although your petition before God is all about you. Are you asking God to bless my foe and bless no more? When have you come to the point in life when you realize that your life is not your own? That's right. Jesus said he endured to the cross. Understanding the journey and the pain that comes along with the faith factor. You always can't have faith for houses and land, people of God. You can't always have faith for God to bless you with some money. You're going to have to have some faith to endure the trials and the tribulations that's going to come your way. The Bible says that the righteous shall suffer prosecution. I don't know who lied to you and told you when you gave your life to God that everything was going to be all right, but the devil is a liar. That's when you just woke him up, and now he's ready for war. Are you ready to fight? God is saying, listen, I understand this thing. I wrote it. I'm the author. I spoke and made something into nothing. I'm the beginning and I am the end. You're my child. You're a joint era to the things that I have, including the faith and the dominion to speak in my name to make things happen. Jesus. <laughs> so you're not done yet? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Truth Church, you're not done yet. It's just getting started. How are you tired already? It's just getting started, Sam. That's right. So you gotta understand something, people of God, that promises birth. Promises. Yes, Lord. Birth. Pain. And when you promise God, Lord, for you, I live. You know how we say. Lord, for you, I die. We did. We so did. And what you just said is that you ready. But the pain that's about to be birthed because of the promise that you made. So God says, are you true to your word? Can, can I hold you to your promise? Because you always hold me to mine. You, you, you always hold me to mine. So, so can I hold you to yours? You told me that you was ready to live. For me. You told me that you was ready to die for me, and as soon as some problem comes, I can't change it. Ooh. That's right. Jesus. God is saying, listen, the only reason why you're going through something because you're not done yet. I have so much more for you. There's so much in the storehouse, and I'm trying to unveil it unto you, but you're going to have to be ready. You quit while I'm telling you to stop. My Lord, my Lord. You're waiting and wondering why Jesus is saying, why? Why are you waiting and wondering when I'm a progressive God? I can't stay still. The angels can't stay still. My disciples can't stay still. So how in the world are you saying that you're my child? You're standing still. God is saying, you're not done yet. There's more for you. What caused you to throw in the towel? What, what, what caused you to feel as though that he's not worthy of a little sacrifice? What, what, what caused you to feel as though that he's not listening to you and he has not dispatched angels on your behalf? What is the problem, people of God? He hears you when you speak. All 
he's waiting for you to do is something. Can you get up and trust God even when you don't see it manifest? Can I hold God to his word and then speak it to myself as I'm reminding myself what God said and then trust him and then be like Peter and say, Lord, is that you? Bid me to come. I don't see the danger that's between Jesus and my question to God. You better hear me. I don't see the danger between Jesus and my question. All I see is him. And that's what I move on. If you can trust him, then you can get exactly what God said you can have. Why you feel like you're too old? Why you feel like you're too young? Why you feel as though you're incompetent and you can't have it? So I don't have my education. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this. I don't have that. Jesus is saying, great. I am so glad you don't. <laughs> you are the perfect candidate today. Because when you start getting all those things, you will trust in that more than you will trust in me. That's why the people we choose ain't the same ones God chose. He wants those that is wounded and broken because now you are in a posture to shut up and listen. That's right. And that's where he wants you. 